Okay, so today we need to talk about these two words, ser and estar. Okay, this is kind of an, a weird topic because this is something that doesn't exist in English, but does exist in Spanish. So if you remember the word ser, you've learned it before, it means to be. And now the tricky part here is that we also have this other word, estar, which also means to be. Okay, so we have a situation where we have one word in English and two words in Spanish for the same thing. Um, so you, we have to talk about uh, when to use which one, okay? You have to divide them like a single situation in English into two in Spanish, okay? Uh, so it's important to know the conjugations. I've written them out here. We've, you already know these ones. Soy, eres, es, somos, sois, and son. Um, estar conjugations are here. They're pretty much normal, what you would expect. Uh, except for estar has a Y at the end for the yo conjugation, estoy, okay? And you've seen this before uh, in phrases like como estas and estoy bien and that kind of thing. Um, but now we need to formally learn how to use it, okay? Um, so one of the big things that we've got to do is talk about the different situations when you use one versus the other, okay? So let me move this over a little bit. We've got our ser, you use it when you're talking about telling time, okay? We've already talked about this um, when you do phrases like son, las, dos, y media, right? It's 2.30. So anytime you're using talking about time, that's there, okay? If you're talking about characteristics, so these are like personality traits or appearance, you use ser. So you could say like, he is tall. You would say like, él es alto, okay? He is tall. Okay, or he is intelligent, like a personality trait, inteligente. Okay, so I just want to give you a couple examples for each of these. All right, when you're talking about somebody's origin, okay, so this is like where somebody is from or what something is made of. Okay, so if you're talking about somebody's origin, that would be like if she is from Mexico, you could say ella es de. Mexico. Okay, that's where she's from. Um, or if something was made of something, like the pencil is made of wood, you would say el lapis es de madera. Okay, it, it's, it's literally the pencil is of wood, and you use is here. Same. All right. The last situation is an occupation. If you're talking about somebody's job or something that they do a lot, like even students, even though you don't get paid, that's kind of like your occupation or what you do. Okay, so like for me, I, you could say like, soy maestro. I am a teacher. Now in English, we put uh in the middle here, but in Spanish, you don't. But the main part here is that you're using ser to illustrate that you are that occupation. Okay. Now, for a star, some of these get kind of tricky, okay? So one of the main ones that you use a star for is locations, okay? Now, a lot of times people will confuse locations and origin because they both talk about a place, um, but ser is used because your origin is a part of you. It's a characteristic, technically, because it never changes. You're always from that place. And your location changes all the time, so it's more of a condition, so you can see that Origin is linked to characteristics, and locations are linked to conditions here. It's other secondary um, characteristics of each word. All right, so if you're talking about where you are right now or where you were, you can use a star. So if um, I'm here in the school, I could say, like, estoy en la escuela. Okay, I am in the school. That's my location. Okay. But remember, you switch to ser if you're talking about where somebody is from, even though they're both locations. So don't get those confused. Okay. Um, the next one, conditions. These are things that are temporary. Something like being sick or injured, um, that sort of thing, is a condition. So you could say like, estás enfermo. Yes, that's a question. Are you sick? Something like that. Okay. This is something that is temporary, uh, it only lasts a little while, and then it's done, it goes away, okay? And then the last one, these feelings is also, these are also conditions, but I feel like it's usually easier if we separate them. 
because uh, sometimes you can confuse conditions with characteristics pretty easily, but feelings are a lot easier to make distinctive. So this is happy, sad, whatever you use a star like estoy feliz. I am happy. Okay, use a star. So um, there's a lot of situations here, and it can be hard. Sometimes you run into a situation where you're not quite sure which category it falls into. So we just need to practice and practice and practice until it becomes second nature to put things into these categories mentally without having to sit and think and read a bunch about it. And we'll practice this a bunch. And this is kind of a big topic. So this is like just the intro. And then we'll practice this a whole bunch until it's very easy to figure out where you go in your sentence. All right.